All right, how's it going, everyone? This is Jose Trujillo. I'm a, I'm a fine art artist. I'm a painter. I'm a fine artist. <laughs> and uh, today I'm going to be uh, painting for you a, uh, a little jar with uh, some flowers and, and that kind of dealio. Okay, so here we go. I mentioned to you in another video that that uh, that I did, the past one. I guess it's not another. It's the past one. How um, how uh, I was talking about. <laughs> I went on a long rant about um, uh, what was it? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> How come, uh, how come certain painters, uh, you know, paint paint the way they do? Like, like I, I was talking about Van Gogh and, and Monet, and you know, these these cats. How come they did what they did, the way they did it? And uh, I thought that's pretty cool. Anyways, this is what I do. So. I can't promise you that I'm not going to go into a into a, a rent. That's kind of my jam. <laughs> All right. The whole point of the the other video, in case you didn't watch it, <laughs> if you didn't watch it, please please watch it. You'll, you'll probably get a lot of out of it. Um, the one before this one, okay? The one uh, I did of a uh, uh, desert landscape. So, the whole point is that I was talking about how uh, painters like, like Van Gogh uh, took things farther than, than, than what uh, the, the, the Impressionists were doing, of course, right? They went. They went a step farther than them, than your traditional uh, um, painters of light, right? The the impressionists were were very much interested in the changing of. Not not just in the changing of of the of light, but uh, a different form of realism, right? They I don't think that they were. They would have called it that. Maybe I don't know. But it really was a different form of realism. It was a, it was a, a different dimension in which to see things and, and perceive other than just form and uh, memory and, and a, 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 a set of rules, right, of how and what colors to use and how to use those colors. Challenging the status quo. Right. And I mentioned in the other video that that's what exactly was was what Van Gogh was doing. Um, in a in a different take on that, right? But that's that's what he was doing. He was he was interested in in uh, in taking it beyond that. I, I I'm sure that he saw his contemporaries being very much interested in. In, uh, in color, in light, right? And, and, the, and how you perceive that, you know, as a, as a, as a human being, how you, how you perceive color and light. How that creates a sense of realism, right? He was, he was able to take it beyond that and perceive it go into the studio or go out or whatever you know doesn't matter where it does matter where you learn though i do believe it does matter where you learn if you are um if you want to paint i don't know horses go check out some horses don't just don't just look at photographs go see horses 
I believe it does matter what because you are able to see the the even if you go and learn how to paint horses by studying horses and then you take it to your studio you take your photographs or whatever you do and you take it to your studio uh, you are going you you have something else you have the advantage of being able to have experienced the movement the behavior and the essence of the horse right and i believe that that's that was something van gogh was very good at with landscapes of course <laughs> not with horses but um Some people tell me, you know, you, 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 do, you, do you ever paint from the subject? Of course I do. I, 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 I do that often, but I do it more for, for uh, purposes of, of learning something. You know, not necessarily, oh, let me look at that and let me sit here and paint it. I, I, I've done that many, 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 many times as, as that's how I learned how to paint. Right? I don't think you can learn how to paint without seeing it or experiencing it one way or another. A uh, photograph is not going to help you. A photograph is going to help you uh, realize the, the, the main idea. Right? But if you are trying to learn how to paint, uh, and, and really are serious about learning how to paint, uh, you have to go and see that, right? Right now, I'm looking at a sketch, right? I'm, 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 I'm basing it out of a lot of memory and uh, a sketch that I created for this painting. But nevertheless, um, the way to do it, of course, is to is to learn that way, you know. When if you, if I were to be learning, if I wanted to be like, well, how do I paint flowers? Well, first you have to you have to see the behavior of flowers. What is what is their behavior? You know, and not just see the flowers because that's a, that's why you have a lot of a lot of um, artists who are very good at at copying a photograph. You know, they look at a photograph, oh, it's very good. But that doesn't mean that they're, you know, painting that. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, okay? Like looking at a photograph and painting from there, I've done that hundreds of times, if not thousands. Uh, I'm not saying that there's something wrong with that. What I'm saying is that when you want to learn, you first have to see the, the, the study, quote unquote. It's not mental, it's, it's observation. So it's very much... Um, uh, scientific, no? It's this observation. Observation. How is it behaving? How does it behave? Because one thing is to capture the flowers in an instant, in a second, you know, when you click the camera, right? That's one thing. That's beautiful. But um, that's one thing. I believe that that's why Chuck Close I moved and moved. I, I I don't know. I mean, if you ever watch this Chuck Close, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you might not disagree with me completely. I I believe that that is why he has gone from from this hyper realism to more and more. I don't even think it's abstraction. You know, people might think it's abstraction. I I don't really think it's. I mean, what even hyper realism is a form of abstraction. You know, that's not really what people look like. You know, we are accustomed to that because we're comparing it to photographs, but that's not really what people look like. And, and, and time has told that over and over. A thousand years from now, when someone paints a portrait, you will see that their idea of realism is going to be much different than the idea of realism that Chuck Close has, you know, of the hyper-realism. It's just the way it is, you know, it's just the way we... we, we we all agree to it, and then we say yes, but, but someone else is going to come and break that mold and show us a different dimension, you know, of realism. That's why I don't trust realism, <laughs> because it, it, it goes so far as to 
as to what is it. Because it will change. It will change. Realism will always change because it's our, it's our, it's our perception, right? It's just like uh, the realism of the, I don't know, 14th, 15th century is very different than that of uh, the 19th century, right? The, the realist painters is very different than that of uh, Courbet's type of work. Of course, it's very different. You know, and it's very different from that of the Egyptians, you know, the cultures, or the, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's very different. How about making any sense? <laughs> if not, it's fine. But what I was trying to tell you about Chaclos is that I'm a big admirer of Chaclos. Uh, is that I believe that is why he goes on and on with changing that. You know, he, he, it's almost a, a very cool. Um, what is it called? It's like a mixture of pointillism with, with um, at least the, the structure of it, no? With um, half tone, right? With the, like the painting that Salvador Dali made of his dead brother, right? His reincarnation painting. Um, in that half tone. Those of you who don't know what half tone is, is the uh, it's how a newspaper was or still printed. I don't know if it still was printed that way. Again, another form of realism, right? That it's not truly the way things are. But that's what the eye perceives it as. Um, but yeah, that's what I was trying to say. That that's why he, Chuck Close, moves to that place. I don't think that it's because... It's becoming more abstract. You know how people say, the older they get, they become more abstract. I don't really think it's, it's necessarily that. It might be true to, you know, for some artists, but um, I think he's becoming more realistic. Not necessarily more abstract. It looks abstract. To the untrained eye. <laughs> I'm joking, you guys. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, this is, this is uh, another of my super awesome paintings. If you guys haven't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug my, my, my sales right here, okay? This is, this is just kinda, I have to do it guys, sorry, but I have to do it. <laughs> uh, if you guys haven't checked out my, my eBay auctions, go check them out. It's you. You'll see. It's 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 unbelievable. I I believe. I believe it's unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> I believe it's unbelievable. Wow. Uh, some people don't understand why I get this these paintings. See, when I exhibit these paintings, uh, any any gallery at least will try to sell them for anywhere between as of now, right? Anywhere between you know four hundred dollars to six hundred dollars, depending framed, about about five something, almost six hundred bucks framed, uh, in order for both of us to make ends meet, right? Gallery will keep fifty or sixty, depending, and I will keep the other half. Part of what I keep, of course, goes to the paint, goes to the right material. And then I make a profit. But you will not believe that I have these paintings available on eBay at auction. And the auctions only start at 99 cents. A lot of people don't believe it. A lot of people think that I'm nuts. It's okay. Maybe I'm a little nuts. Because sometimes the paintings do go for that. And it doesn't have nothing to do with whether they're valued at that or not. It's just that not enough people know who I am, right? That's, that's one of the reasons I'm also doing these videos, because not enough people know who I am. Not enough people know that I do this. I paint a lot, and if I were not to auction them, I don't know what I would do with them. I would probably, I don't know, just put them in boxes. I don't want to do that. So I'm creating these 99 cent auctions. I am addicted to painting. I paint so much 
that people don't understand why I do it, how I do it, I just do it. And if you want to take advantage of those auctions, you got to go to eBay on the search browser, on their search box, type in my name, it's Jose Trujillo. You can just check out the, the listing here, Jose Trujillo, and you will find dozens, if not hundreds, of paintings that I post. Uh, maybe, hopefully by the, the times many of you are watching this, maybe it's, I don't know, maybe I, I still have the crazy uh, to paint more. Maybe I'll be painting more, who knows? I don't know how long I'm going to keep doing this. But I'm going to do it until enough people know of it. And once that happens, well, you know what happens with artists. And everybody wants one. Prices change. My name is Jose Trujillo. I am the world's finest living artist. Thank you so much for watching.